Hello and thanks for joining us at interest.co.nz. I'm Janae Tipsharani and today I'm joined by the Reserve Bank Assistant Governor, Christian Hawksby. Thanks for your time, Christian. Kia ora. Um, it's been an unusual week or so, lots happening. Um, markets mm-hmm. around the world, including in New Zealand, are betting on inflation returning a bit sooner than perhaps we previously thought. And this is happening at, at the same time as the Reserve Bank and other mm-hmm. central banks are, are keeping <coughs> monetary policy loose and trying to get um, banks to, to lower interest rates. But um, while you're saying one thing, um, markets are, bond yields are, are mm-hmm. going up and, and markets are betting on another thing. What do you make of this situation and, and how does the Reserve Bank plan to respond? Yeah. So this is the sort of nature of markets, isn't it? They're continually trying to get ahead of central banks and in these type of inflection points, trying to pick, uh, you know, when things are turning, try and get ahead of the story. Um, and there has been genuinely some stronger data you know, over the last few months, I think the economic uh, outlook and the inflation outlook is better, uh, both here domestically and globally. To so, to some extent, markets are factoring in that better information. Uh, I think they're also starting to extrapolate out. You know, what does that mean for for central bank actions um, going forward? <clears throat> the message that we're giving, along with other central banks around the world, is that you know we're playing a patient game. Uh, we think that. Uh, the economic recovery here has been pretty uneven, pretty fragile. When we look ahead, we see some some headwinds in front of us. We've also felt like we've learned the lesson from the, the post-GFC period of sort of declaring victory too early mm-hmm. um, and the fact that inflation has been below the midpoint of our target range, you know, consistently for a long period. Um, so really wanting to have some high degree of confidence that inflation is going to be, you know, anchored uh, around that 2%, even spend some time above, uh, and that's going to take time time to happen. So it's a, that's a message that you know, both the Reserve Bank and other central banks globally are just trying to reinforce. Sure. The Reserve Bank of Australia actually doubled down on its um, bond purchases mm-hmm. through its equivalent of our large-scale asset yep. purchase program. Is this something the Reserve Bank is, could do um, and would do if it needed to really tell the market, no, look, seriously, you need to keep interest rates low? Yep. Yeah, so we've got, uh, we have an LSAT program and the size of the program is dictated by the Monetary Policy Committee. Uh, then they've delegated the sort of operational implementation of that to the staff and that's great because it gives us that flexibility to um, scale up or scale down the, the size of those uh, purchases on, on a weekly basis. So we're watching markets really carefully. You know, we've observed uh, the price action, which has been pretty volatile over the last week or so. Uh, there have been pockets of dysfunction, I think, along the way, not just in New Zealand, but in Australia and the US as well. There is a lot of talk of sort of thin, thinly liquid um, conditions. So we do have that optionality that we can uh, scale up the, the size of the program if we think that would be appropriate. What are we looking at uh, to do that? Uh, part of it is around, uh, you know, we know that we can't control the, the level of long-term yields that are driven by a, by a number of factors, but we can look at how they are, you know, moving around relative to comparators. We can observe the whether markets are becoming dysfunctional mm-hmm. or not, and so we do have that optionality. Okay, um, just a bit of a, um, not a full economics 101 lesson, but could you just explain to us how um, the Reserve Bank uh, buying more bonds in the secondary market through the LSAP mm-hmm. might settle some of the dysfunction? If should, you know, should there be further patches? Yeah, dysfunction? yeah, so I, I think the, the classic example to think back at is March last year. You know, we had an environment in March last year where uh, not only uh, was the government having to issue bonds at a large scale because of to fund the, the COVID response, uh, but it was an environment also where um, globally uh, investment managers were selling bonds to, to liquidate portfolios. They were worried about redemptions. Uh, we had uh, dealers who are meant to be providing liquidity also wanting to sell bonds to, to reduce their amount of risk. So the fact that we could come in and be a large scale um, purchaser on the buy side of the market actually helped settle settle things down and bring some proper two-way flow, gave others the confidence to, to purchase bonds knowing that there are others out there doing the same thing. 
Uh, you know, so that was the extreme example of last March. <clears throat> Uh, so that you know the same same goes now uh, the New Zealand debt management are still they're not issuing in the same scale that they were last year but they still are a, a presence in the market and our large scale asset purchase program you know ensures that we're a presence on the other side of the market keeping that markets functioning and yields lower than otherwise if we weren't there. Okay so just to be clear at the moment Reserve Bank staff could buy more bonds on a given day than might otherwise be the case um, is consideration being given to extending the LSAT beyond June 2022, uh, which is yeah. currently the plan? Yeah, so that would be uh, those, those sort of high level parameters about the LSAT program are a decision for the MPC, mm -hmm. so the overall scale of the program up to 100 billion mm -hmm. uh, and the length of time that that program runs over. At the moment, the, um, the program's running till um, June um, 22, uh, but we have a, uh, an indemnity with the Crown that would enable us to, to run that program longer if, if the MPC you know, decided that was the right thing to do. Okay, so you could run it longer. Yep. Yep. And, um, and how worried is the bank that, um, because that indemnity means that the Reserve Bank can't buy more than 60% of the New Zealand government bonds on issue, um, we've got that cap and at the same time Treasury is issuing fewer bonds than was previously planned. Is the bank worried that you could hit that 60% um, cap perhaps earlier than you might otherwise mm -hmm. want to? Yeah, so we, we have been, given that we do have that operational uh, independence around the size of our purchases week to week, we have been adjusting that through time. So we, through the course of um, January and early February, we were we were purchasing at a slower pace than we had been in, in the latter half of last year. So we do have that ability to change uh, the program. Uh, you know, I think the other thing to note would be, well, sorry, and we, some uh, in regards to that 60% limit, you know, we are getting up towards 40 to 50% of, of some bonds on issue. So we are getting close uh, to that 60% limit. You know, the good thing about the current situation is that now that um, banks have had time to get operationally ready for a negative official cash rate, that means that we've got more tools in the, the toolkit. If we did want to provide more uh, monetary stimulus, we don't just have to turn the, the LSAP or the Funding for Lending Program aren't our only tool available. Mm -hmm. We do have the ability to lower the official cash rate. So as in a monetary policy committee, we've just got to you know, weigh up the menu of tools mm -hmm. that we have available, assess them against our five principles with, with effectiveness being a really critical one. So it's really a judgment for the, the MPC. What's the right tool to be the most effective at the current moment? Okay. Um, I mean, is a negative OCR cutting the OCR? Uh, obviously all the things are on the table, but how serious of an option is that given in the monetary policy statement, the unconstrained OCR track um, was actually not tracking into negative? What, what does that mean when that was tracking upward? And, um, and then at the same time, the bank was saying, okay, but actually we still have a negative OCR as an option. Yep. Yep. How do we reconcile those yeah, two? No, that's issues? a good, good point. So <clears throat> uh, the unconstrained OCR path that we publish is effectively a summary measure of all the different monetary policy tools uh, that we've got in play. Uh, and that's telling us that on equivalent basis, we've got the equivalent of having the OCR at about a negative a half, half a percent when you take into the LSAT, the uh, funding for lending program and the other forward guidance, other things. Uh, and what our what our baseline scenario is telling us is that that feels like it's broadly the right place to be in terms of all the different settings we have at the moment and it's likely to be the right place to be over the next year or two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing to remember is that that's our, we're still working in a world of scenarios and that's our baseline scenario but we're you know, well aware that there are different scenarios that can mm -hmm. play out things can be better than expected, things could be worse than expected. Sure. And so it's really a matter of being prepared. Um, so if we go, come back to the table uh, in three months' time and, and run through our process again, assess the economy, um, you know, there could be a different answer around you know, how much stimulus we, we do think is required. Mm. And so we just need to be uh, contingency planning for that type of environment as well. Um, 
All right, look, at the monetary policy statement, there's a press conference afterwards that some of our viewers might have um, tuned into. And it's a, a message that came out quite strongly from that was um, from the Reserve Bank telling retail banks they need to keep rate interest rates, uh, mortgage rates, and possibly deposit rates low, and that's what the Reserve Bank mm-hmm. wants. But given markets are, um, the financial markets are sort of doing something else, can people expect uh, mortgage rates and term deposit rates to keep going down or, or basically just sort of stay where they are for the next wee while? Yeah, so, so the, the key message from our uh, you know, economic scenarios is that interest rates need to stay low for a prolonged period. And when we say interest rates, we mean the interest rates that matter for economic activity. Um, you know, so that's mortgage rates, other lending rates, the ones that really affect households in businesses. Uh, what we've sort of observed is that um, you know, funding costs have have fallen given the actions that we've taken over the course of the last year or so, the, the effect of the LSAP program, the funding for lending program, the way that term deposit rates have fallen progressively over the course of last year. You know, our assessment is that does give banks headroom to you know keep lending rates low, you know, if not lower them further. So that's just an important message that we get out there in terms of you know setting expectations. For us, this is a repeat you know exercise. So if um, you know if, if lending rates rise in a way that um, jeopardises our ability to achieve our mandate, then you know we need to do something about it in terms of the actions that we take and the settings that we have in place. Is there anything you can do? We'll just talk about the funding for lending program, which is um, the Reserve Bank basically uh, offering banks cheap loans should they want them with the hope that if banks have cheaper funding they can um, lower their, their interest rates. Um, but there's nothing in that program that makes that, that can force the banks to do that. So they could take the cheaper, cheaper funding and basically profit from it or use that to pay down uh, more expensive funding or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, now the Reserve Bank decided not to put conditions on that to make them lower the rates but is there anything else the bank can do other than stand up and say banks you need to do the right thing by according to what we want you to do yes yeah, so I, th- I think the key message here is that the the most important channel uh, for the funding for lending program is the way that it works as a mechanism to lower interest rates um, for for households and businesses so for us it's much less about the volume and we've always said that we're not going to measure the success of the program by how much volume goes through it it's the fact that it's there and it gives the banks the um, the comfort to be able to lower their other funding sources so they're not having to chase funding in wholesale markets and paying you know pay up for it um, they're having the confidence to lower term deposit rates um, in, in the retail market and that lowering their, their overall funding and then for that to be those aggregate lower funding costs to be passed in, in, into lower lending rates you know, that's the, the mechanism that we've always talked about um, <clears throat> so part of us uh, part of our job there is to sort of explain how that's going mm. what's happening to those funding costs how it is that they are or aren't being passed through, and what we're saying at the moment is there's a bit, you know, there's a bit, there's still left to go. Right, and they just need to because you've said. Yeah, I mean the, there'll be that will be the pressure on them. There's the competitive pressure. I think that's one of the factors that has been um, made the process a little bit slower uh, mm-hmm. than otherwise. Is that there's a very high demand for you know mortgage lending yes. out there at the moment. The banks are all busy. Um, I think that those dynamics will, will, will change through time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, just jumping to the other news of last week was that uh, the Finance Minister Grant Robertson changed the Monetary Policy Committee's remit, just added a new clause that said the committee had to assess um, yep. its actions against the government's uh, housing policy. Now the word assess implies you don't have to change the way you do monetary policy, you just have to assess it. Mm-hmm. What does assess mean? Does this mean there will be a report that might come out with the next monetary policy statement that says, or just a little bit at the end that says mm-hmm. this is the impact on house prices? Yeah, so I think the key thing with the announcements last week around 
uh, the government's housing policy is, is, is actually on our financial stability side. Mm. So the, the key centrepiece of the change, and I'll get to how it gets to the NPC yeah. remit, but it's a sort of an important step mm. along the way. Uh, the government has uh, issued a directive that we need to take into account uh, the government's um, policy for having, supporting sustainable house prices when we set financial policy. Uh, and so what that means is that uh, w when we set our financial stability policy uh, to take that into account and we think that that's the right place for it to be, yeah. it sits nicely there, mm -hmm. sustainable asset prices and a resilient financial system, they are the ingredients that you look for mm -hmm. um, in terms of ensuring um, financial stability, efficiency and soundness. So we think that that's the right place for it to mm -hmm. be. Um, and the, the appropriate tools are in that space too, yep. you know, the macro prudential tools, the loan to value restrictions, and we've asked for other types of tools in that space. Mm. Um, the purpose of amending the MPC remit is just to sort of illustrate that we are, you know, joined up. One hand knows what the other hand is doing. So sure. even though on the monetary policy side we'll continue to set interest rates to ensure that we are achieving our mandate for price stability and mm. maximum sustainable employment, we need to do it with a full line of sight of what the implications are for, you know, other bits in the puzzle. Yeah. Uh, and our, you know, the um, requirement for us to assess is effectively a communication one, right. be, to be transparent. Uh, and we have plenty of mechanisms, you know, to do that. We have the monetary policy statement, we have the record of the meeting. Um, just effectively, a, you know, a, an expanded minutes of, of the MPC, and you'll see that. Is that where we might see it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's where we see at the moment the the MPC. Uh, you know, we need to have regard to financial stability when mm -hmm. we set interest rates, and we need to ensure that we're not creating unnecessary volatility in the exchange rate output. Sure, um, and this is just rates. another. And all of those things get covered in the record of the meeting, mm -hmm. as in. They need to be a key part of the discussion and, and things that have been on the table when we make the decision. 